Apple's smallest iPhone has a big problem. The battery life is not great. But luckily, I've got a fix. For a lot of people, the iPhone 12 mini is the perfect iPhone to buy in 2020. And yes, it does have some issues, but I don't think those issues or problems are at all big enough to not make you buy the phone. At least most people should still go ahead and buy it. In this video, I'm breaking down five things you can do to fix the iPhone 12 mini's biggest problem, and also do a bit of a deep dive into a potential new Apple product that could just launch and save the day. Before we get into any of the downsides with the new iPhone 12 mini, I would be remiss if I didn't tell you about all of the good things with the iPhone 12 mini, because after being able to actually hold one in my hand for the first time that was not a dummy model, I can report that this phone lives up to the hype. All of the rumors, all of the clamoring, all of the want for this new, small, one-handed iPhone uh, has turned out to be reality, and this is the perfect one-handed iPhone. It's small, it's compact, it's portable, it's comfortable, and it's very easy to use with one hand. I think for a lot of people who have been using the 5.8-inch iPhone variants and the 6.1-inch variants, who have been long waiting for kind of a smaller screen, this is the iPhone they have been waiting for. The iPhone 12 mini is here, and it is much smaller, and much more manageable than those other iPhones. And I do have to say that although the iPhone 12 mini shares the exact same design as the 12 and the 12 Pro and 12 Pro Max, it's a lot less aggressive on the 12 mini. It still looks great. It's got those boxy corners, kind of squirt off edges, but it doesn't feel as uncomfortable to hold in the hand as something like the 12 Pro Max. After spending a little time with that phone, it's amazing, it's big, it's beautiful. Uh, it is uh, everything you'd want in a pro end Max phone, but it's very big and you feel every corner and every edge of that boxy design language. On the iPhone 12 mini, because that phone is physically smaller, it's a lot more comfortable to hold in the hand. I don't think it's a reason to not buy the Max for any reason or anything like that, but I do have to say the Mini is just more comfortable to hold uh, when you start to spend a little bit of time with one of these new iPhones. You've got a combination of a glass and aluminum build on this phone that's gonna give you a very premium looking and a very premium feeling phone that's lightweight, that feels really nice in the hand to hold. Along with that smaller form factor and those premium materials, you also have an OLED display on here as well. It's 5.4 inches and it would give you everything you'd expect from an OLED display. It's very bright. Right, it's vibrant, great colors, inky blacks. You kind of know what to expect from an OLED. Apple is bringing their A game here, and it's nice to see them bring the exact same display that you'd have on the larger 12, 12 Pro, and even some DNA from the 12 Pro Max down to this smaller form factor. It's an excellent panel, and it looks really nice. I did notice kind of uh, my first few minutes with the phone, the notch seemed to be a little bit bigger or just appear to be bigger, but I think that was just because it occupies more of, or it seems to occupy more of the screen just because that screen is smaller, that definitely kind of went away. The more I spent with the phone, the more time, uh, the less that notch was as apparent, kind of like we've had in the past couple of years since the iPhone 10. And also I was a little bit afraid of losing screen real estate because that phone was smaller. I thought I wouldn't be able to see as much in apps. That was kind of the case for the first few minutes. But again, kind of like with the notch story, the more time I spent with the phone, the more those concerns and the more those things kind of seemed to fade away to the background. And I just was able to enjoy that smaller screen for what it was. I also have zero complaints when it comes to the cameras on the iPhone 12 mini. You've got two cameras here this year, a wide angle shooter that is the new and improved main shooter and the ultra wide angle lens on there as well. And as you can see from some of these photo samples, the photos just look fantastic. It's kind of almost mind blowing to think that you're getting photos uh, and even videos that look this good uh, from a system that is this small in a phone that is, you know, this small. Uh, it is just uh, awesome to see these photos and videos really kind of come to life and really kind of pop when you show them on screen and on video like this. And as you can see, I have no complaints. Photo quality, video quality, it just looks fantastic. This is the exact same camera system as you get in the larger iPhone 12, and a lot of the same DNA as the 12 Pro and 12 Pro Max. So as you can see, no complaints here in terms of photo or video quality. And you even got Dolby Vision HDR up to 30 frames per second. So if you do wanna shoot some HDR video, you can do that on the 12 mini as well. 
And I've made this point in previous videos, but I think it's kind of worth reiterating again. I think these are really the two lenses that most people are going to care about, the wide and the ultra wide. The telephoto is nice, but I think it's more of a niche, more of a pro feature. So you are missing that telephoto lens. You're also gonna miss the LiDAR scanner from the 12 Pro and 12 Pro Max, as well as the ability to uh, record uh, Dolby Vision at 60 frames per second or Apple Pro RAW support. But I think those are kind of very small trade-offs for what you get with the 12 mini. I think most people would rather have the form factor of the 12 mini then have those other software and hardware features. I don't really think you're missing anything on the 12 mini. You're gonna get an excellent camera system that's great for photos and videos. And for those wondering about performance, the A14 Bionic is just crazy fast in this thing. It is stupid capable, it's versatile. You can do anything you want to in terms of loading apps and games and editing video. I didn't get a whole lot of time to try this phone out just yet, but it was more than capable in my brief amount of time with testing it. Uh, and you shouldn't have any slowdown or any sluggishness whatsoever. So I've talked about all the good with the iPhone 12 mini. It seems like the perfect iPhone. There are no issues, right? It's just great. Well, unfortunately, that's not the case. It does have one big problem, one big downside to that form factor, and that's gonna be battery life. Because this phone is smaller, the battery inside is also physically smaller. Apple can only fit a battery so big, and you're going to kind of uh, suffer in terms of battery life. You're just not going to get a battery champion like you get on the 12, 12 Pro, or 12 Pro Max. You have to be a little bit more mindful on how you use the battery inside of the 12 mini. And before I go any further, let me just say personally, I have not had enough time with the phone myself to give you any kind of review in terms of battery. I just haven't had enough time to really put that battery through its paces, but other publications have had the chance to really thoroughly test it. And from what we've seen from their findings, uh, there are some big takeaways and some big lessons we can learn. We know that the iPhone 12 mini has a 2,227 milliamp hour battery inside. So it's gonna be right in between the larger iPhone 12 and the smaller 2020 iPhone SE, if that kind of helps you determine what battery life is going to be. What I've seen floating around is that the phone is fairly easy to kill with heavy use. And with mixed use, you're gonna get about four hours of screen on time with the phone typically dying in the early evening hours without charging it during the day. That's kind of what I've been able to compile and it seems about right with my brief time with the phone. And I do think there are kind of two sides to this story. You have one side of people that really don't use their phone all that much. Maybe they're on it a couple of times a day to check the web and to text and do stuff like that. Uh, if you're not a really heavy phone user, then this battery is probably going to be fine to get you through just about a day of normal use. I guess it kind of depends how heavy you're hitting that battery, but if you're doing just basic things, maybe this isn't a problem. On the other hand, if you know you are an exceptionally heavy phone user, you're gonna be hitting that battery, you do a lot of video streaming, a lot of game playing, a lot of video recording and photo taking, then just kind of know going into this that you are not getting a phone that is going to be a battery champion. This is a small battery and a small phone, and if you need to have a battery that's going to last well over a day or a solid day performer, then look at the 12 or the 12 Pro or 12 Pro Max. I know that those screens are bigger, but you are going to get a bigger battery because those phones are physically larger. The 12 mini, I think for most people, is probably gonna be just fine, but if you know you're a heavy battery user, then you might wanna look at other options. So with that out of the way, if you're going to get a 12 mini and you know you're gonna be kind of putting that battery through its paces, but you're not a super heavy battery user, what can you do to kind of mitigate the battery loss and make sure you can get a day of fairly good usage with that phone? Well, I think there are five things you can do, and here's number one. First, it's obvious, but I'd recommend keeping an eye on your screen brightness. The OLED display in the 12 mini is going to be more efficient than the LCD on the 10R and the 11 and other previous small iPhones, even the iPhone SE. But you gotta understand that even though it's efficient, when you're maxing out the brightness, it's going to be putting some strain on that battery. So just keep in mind what your brightness level is at. If you're outside a lot during the day or in bright conditions, just be mindful that when you have that screen uh, maxed out on brightness, which you might just you know kind of have to do to be able to see it, uh, you are going to be taking a hit in terms of battery life. Uh, so I'd probably try to keep it between 50 and 60% when you're inside. You don't need to keep it totally dim and at like 10%, but just keep in mind the longer you have that screen on max brightness, the more you're going to be eating away at that battery life inside of the phone. I'd also recommend making sure that auto brightness is on because this should kind of help keep the phone balanced and keep it automatically uh, changing in terms of brightness depending on where you're at, whether you're inside or outside. Uh, it should be on by default, but just to double check that it's on, head into accessibility, 
go to display and make sure auto brightness is turned on. Second tip, although the iPhone 12 mini is 5G capable, which is really great, it's one of the smallest 5G phones, it's got all the components built in, it's really great and very capable, you might not want to use 5G all that much. From what we've seen from our testing with the iPhone 12 and 12 Pro, using 5G seems to drain the battery about 20% more than if you were just on regular old 4G LTE. So the more streaming and browsing and the more you're using 5G, the faster that little battery inside of the 12 mini is going to drain. So actually in a previous video on iPhone tips and tricks that we will link to down below, I actually talked about how to force your phone to use 5G. And we're gonna do kind of the same similar steps, but in this case, we're gonna force the phone to not use 5G. So head into settings, go to cellular, go to cellular data options, then go to voice and data, and instead of having 5G on or 5G auto, if you wanna really maximize battery life, just go to LTE mode. This is going to basically force your iPhone 12 mini to use LTE. It's not something you have to do all the time, but if you do wanna save battery life, you kinda of want to avoid 5G if at all possible, especially if you're not doing anything super demanding. If you're just streaming music or you're checking the web or social media, you don't really need to utilize those 5G speeds. So it might be good for the sake of your battery to keep 5G turned off. Next tip is to turn your iPhone 12 mini into low power mode when you need to. This has been a feature in iOS for a number of years now, and essentially what this is going to do is when you flip that switch and turn on low power mode, it's going to stop unnecessary background tasks from happening. So it's gonna stop uh, photos from iCloud Photo Library uh, downloading or uploading. It's going to stop any kind of automatic email uh, fetching in the background, and also going to stop any kind of automatic app downloads. Basically stopping any background tasks from happening to to maximize battery life. You probably don't need to have your phone in low power mode all the time because that kind of defeats the purpose of some of the cool stuff your phone can do automatically for you in the background. But if you are kind of nearing the end of your day and you're kind of seeing that battery uh, percentage tick lower and lower, turning on low power mode should help your phone maximize that battery it has left and give you a little bit more juice to get you through the end of the day to a charger. My next tip I have to give with a grain of salt. Uh, I'm not typically one to advocate people to spend money on things they don't need to. Though in this case, I do think spending money on another wired charging solution or a wireless charging solution or Apple's MagSafe solution might be money well spent when it comes to battery on your 12 mini. If you're in your car on your commute and you can plug that 12 mini into a power source, uh, that is going to greatly do wonders for the battery life of your phone throughout the day. If you're working like at a desk behind me and you have a wireless charging pad or Apple's MagSafe charger, just throwing that phone on there for 15 to 20 minutes, especially if it's a fast charger is going to give you a little bit more juice that could kind of make or break your battery usage for the day, depending on your usage with your phone. I mean, if you're able to keep that 12 mini on a charger for hours uh, of your day and keep that phone kind of at the high 70 to 80% in terms of battery capacity, then you're going to have no problem making it through a day or even over to the next day. Just having an option to charge the phone uh, as much as possible is definitely going to help. And even Apple's MagSafe charger, though it's a little bit pricier, it is going to charge the phone faster faster than a traditional Qi charger. It's not gonna give you the full 15 watts that you get on the 12 Pro or the 12 or 12 Pro Max, but it is going to charge faster than the puny seven and a half watts from any Qi wireless charging pad. And last but not least, you could always buy a charging case of some kind. Apple has always in years past seemed to update their charging cases for their new phones. So I would not be the least bit surprised to see a new Apple made 12 mini battery case appear that is going to do wonders and solve all of your battery issues and you'll never have to think about battery life again. Although it is gonna make the phone a little bit chunkier on the back end, so it might be a little bit less comfortable to hold, but you will get better battery life. But I think what's even more interesting than that is this idea of a MagSafe battery bank. We've seen some concepts of these kind of float around online. The idea that Apple could use MagSafe technology to allow you to kind of stick a battery puck on the back of your iPhone 12 or 12 mini in this case, uh, charge the phone up for like 10, 15 minutes, and then just take the puck off and have more battery life now in your phone. The nice thing about this is you wouldn't have to deal with any cases, there's no cables to plug into, you just snap it on the back of your phone, it charges rapidly, you take it off and you're good to go. You could have like one of these in your bag, your purse, your backpack, just kind of keep it on you at all times, snap it to the back of your phone to get some juice into that battery, take it off when you don't need it and you're good to go. This kind of modular kind of MagSafe snap it on, snap it off would be very, very cool. And we're seeing Apple continue to kind of grow this ecosystem uh, as well as uh, third parties of this MagSafe 
adapter and accessory uh, line of different devices. We've seen it from Belkin, we've seen it from Apple and other companies. It is super cool to see the MagSafe ecosystem grow. And I think whether or not Apple does it or not, someone is going to make some kind of really cool MagSafe battery puck that snaps onto the back of your phone. And that should really do some big wonders to help with those battery woes with the iPhone 12 mini. I think what this really comes down to is just kind of keeping the battery level of your 12 mini in mind when you do things. If you're a heavy iPhone user, just keep in mind you're not going to get a battery champion with this phone. And if you're just a casual user, just kind of keep in mind the screen brightness, where your battery's at, kind of what you're doing with the phone. But I think with typical normal usage, you probably will be just fine to get through a day, uh, but probably no more than that. But for now, those are five things you can do to increase the battery life on your 12 mini that I think are very good options that should help you get the very most out of that 12 mini experience and enjoy the phone for all that it can do. So what do you guys think? iPhone 12 mini, the perfect iPhone this year, the best iPhone, the smallest iPhone, is it right for you? Or are you going with another option? Is there something about the 12 mini that you're just not a super big fan of? Is the screen too small? Do you want the LiDAR sensor? Or are you better off just going with the Pro Max, admitting defeat and going with the largest iPhone Apple currently makes? Which iPhone are you picking up? Which one would you pick up? Let us know in the comments down below. As always, we appreciate uh, the support on this channel and uh, we appreciate you watching. Uh, thank you so much. I'm Robert Rosenfeld from the Apple Circle and I will see you guys in the next one.